I started by painting the wall, and I'm actually really proud of this, which sounds dumb, I know, but I'm one of those people who struggles to pick colors and goes and reads six different articles about the undertones of SW Brown Fox before actually buying a sample. And this turned out well, so color me shocked. Then I grabbed some 2x3s and turned them into 1x2s. It would have been faster to buy 1x2s from the get-go, but the selection was a mess and the 2x3s were nicer. I also made a 45 degree bevel on one side because if I'm going to make a slat wall that actually holds things, I might as well go all in. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll tell you more later, I promise. Then I cut them into 12 inch, 18 inch, 24 inch, and 30 inch pieces and sanded for a really long time to make things presentable. A smart person would have connected the shop vac, but I don't know, I thought it was gonna be 10 seconds and then it wasn't, oh well. Finally, I tossed a coat of shellac on them for protection, then started screwing them to the wall in a random order. Okay, not so random. I got anxious about this too. So now, here's the thing. Lots of people are going to tell me about how ugly the screws are. I hear you, but I actually want these slats to be able to hold up shelving and other accessories. And if they're going to do that, then they need to be screwed to the studs. You can tell me in the comments if you think I should have used brass screws instead. I went back and forth, so let me know what you think. It was actually harder than it looks to screw the slats up. The stud in the corner didn't extend out a full inch and a half, so the screw needed to be really close to the edge of the board to hit the stud. This made everything more difficult, despite the carefully drilled pilot holes I made before starting. Which brings me to the MVT of the day, the impact driver. I couldn't get the right angle or enough force with the normal drill, so this was a huge help. Impy the impact driver would appreciate it if you hit the like button below in her honor, or maybe just because these videos take a bunch of work to make and it would help me out a lot. Thanks. Finally, I could actually hang things. Now, traditionally, slat walls hold things by simply pinching the wood in place between the slats. Frankly, I think this is a terrible idea because wood changes sizes throughout the year, so it might hold your shelf in the summer when the wood has expanded and then drop it in November when the wood shrinks. I don't get it but I guess it works for some people. Either way, I went with what is called a French cleat system instead. That beveled edge I made locks with another beveled edge against the wall. You can actually hold really heavy things this way. Usually, you leave a lot of space between the slats since you have to be able to lift up the cleat to move it off the wall. But since my slats weren't actually very long, I figured I could just keep the slats close together and slide the cleat off the edge instead. I built two little bookshelves to go on the bottom and then a few basic boxes to hold some plants up top. Neither of these were particularly innovative or impressive, but I did practice my box joint skills on the bookshelves with moderate success. Then I went for a second try at these minimalist peg hook things. The first time around was about as sturdy as a late game Jenga tower, which you can see in my DIY organizers video, but I had some ideas for making it better, which I thought I'd give a shot. This time I used smaller screws and it was a huge improvement, but it's still a little wobblier than I'd like. Threaded inserts instead of T-nuts might make it even better, so if these don't hold up, I'll try that. I made some quick plant hangers out of leftover cotton cord. I am not a macrame expert. In fact, I don't even know how to say it. Is it macrame? Is it macrame? I, I don't know, please send help. Either way, these are really easy. Basically, you can cut seven foot lengths of cord, center them on some leftover dowel, and tie a knot in each pair of cording. Then tie two more levels of knots about three inches apart, pulling different adjacent sets of cords. Then tie one really big knot at the end. These were kind of bad instructions because this is not a video on macrame planter making. But this is the most common hanging planter style out there, so if you want to make this, a quick Google search will get you what you need. Regardless, I hung everything up, dropped $50 on plants, and then decided this would have to be good enough. I'm not sure how I feel about the painted bookshelves. They weren't right before either, but these just seem like a little too much white. Maybe another plant would help, like when in doubt, put a plant? I don't know. Tell me what you think I should do in the comments below. For real, I need help. For now though, let's just see if I can keep these plants alive. Which you, person watching this in the future, can find out. Someday I will finish this dining room makeover and I will put the review video right here. And in the meantime, go check out my first attempt at the peg organizers over here. Thanks and I'll see you next time.